Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team. Wanted to make this video on short selling or otherwise known as shorting a stock. Um, I really want to take a couple minutes just to really start off by uh, saying, you know, dispelling some of the misconceptions about short selling and, um, you know, it's not as risky as people think. Uh, is shorting risky? Absolutely. Um, but if you're doing day trading strategies and you're shorting, short selling uh, intraday, it's not as risky as long as you have proper risk management strategies in place like you would with day trading, swing trading, any type of trading. Uh, before you make any trade of any sorts, you need to always have proper risk management strategy set up, having at least two to one profit to loss ratios, meaning risking 10 cents to make 20, risking 50 cents to make a dollar, risking a dollar to make two dollars, not risking a dollar to make 10 cents or 50 cents to make five cents. Uh, you want to always have your profit <clears throat> profit loss ratio at least a minimum of two to one, right? So when you're going long, right, you're taking a long position, you're bullish and going up, you have stop losses, right? So if you're risking 10 cents, it's ideally to make 20 cents. If you're risking 50 cents, it's ideally to make a dollar going up. The same strategy is uh, in effect going down. Uh, so you're obviously buying with longing, you obviously want to buy at support levels and sell at resistance levels. With shorting, it's just the opposite. You want to sell at resistance levels and buy at support levels, right? So selling at resistance, buying at support, rather than buying at support, selling at resistance. It's just the inverse. Now, there's several different ways that you can short a stock. So for instance, with longing a stock, you can buy at the break of levels and ride on the way up, right? So buying at um, <clears throat> break of high of days and selling at resistance levels, or you can buy on a dip, on a pullback, on a bull flag, and then, you know, um, writing it up from there. Uh, or you can buy on a complete sell-off, you know, otherwise known as buying the dip. Um, and the same thing with shorting. There's several different ways that you can short a stock. You can short a stock, um, you know, on a bull flag. So when it's going up, for instance, you can see the stock right here. This is a little bit tougher, but you can trade like when a stock's really moving up like this, you can see the farther away a stock gets <coughs> from the moving average lines, the more it wants to gravitate back. Doesn't mean it's going to happen right when you think it's going to happen. Uh, shorting, again, sometimes it's tougher to find a top because obviously you're you're going against the grain of the momentum of the stock, uh, so it's that's why it's always important to have like an SPX chart or S and P chart up um, to basically give you a gauge of what the market's doing. So if the market's really bullish and you go to short a top, many a times it might go against you because the stock still has some momentum uh, going with it. So trying to find a top at times could be a little bit difficult. That's why you want to be careful on big candles. Like if you see some big candles, sometimes it's kind of tough to short them. You got to, again, you have to be careful. You have to be quick many times because you're, again, sometimes shorting against, you're shorting against the grain of a potential bullish stock. So finding a doji top or an inverse hammer top is a little bit, it's going to be better than trying to find sometimes a big candlestick. But this is also a five minute chart right now, obviously pulling up a one minute uh, we'll move things a little bit quicker, but I want to show you several different ways to look at things, several different charts, several different ideas to shorting because there's um, <clears throat> strategies within a strategy, right? So on a five minute chart here, you can see the two tweezer tops here. It didn't break. Obviously, it's far away from the nine. This is a potential short down, obviously watching VWAP and... Um, you know, the EMAs as other support levels. So this is still potentially a bull flag. So you might only short it down to either VWAP or 9 EMA, then cover, right? You can see this five minute uh, doji is one to be careful. So you can see if you shorted right there at that 230 and it got down to the, down to that doji right around here, around $2, that means that right that whole dollar amount, buyers are, you know, either the buyers are going to come in or the sellers are going to go. But you can obviously, if you short it at the top of this, that 230 down to $2, that's a 30 cent short, risking the high of day, right, as your stop. So if on this one, if you were shorting on a five minute time frame, 
you can see it didn't break. It's like those tweezer tops when it fell back down. Obviously, it didn't crack. It didn't go down to this 9 EMA. It didn't crack below. And you see this uh, kind of this doji candle. That's a potential reversal. So now, um, instead of it just being a double top and coming back down, now it's a potential bull flag. You can see a big flag coming up and now potentially going up. You obviously can't see what's going to happen over here when that move is happening. Um, but you're shorting at a resistance. So obviously, you're trying to gauge a top and short it down to the moving average lines and watching those moving average lines that are support. Hopefully, if you're shorting, the more it starts falling below those, those resist, uh, moving average lines now become resistance. So right here, you would have gotten it and it would have went down to VWAP, formed a doji. You'd probably want to be careful and probably cover your position here. But then look what it did. It went up another time again and it broke right here, right? See, it broke those tweezer tops there. And then it formed another almost two tweezer tops right up here. So it kind of did it did it again. So sometimes it's very tough to call the top. So especially on bigger candles, when you find these bigger candles with these longer wicks and stuff like that, it's very, very difficult uh, to short. Obviously, you, you'd want to get ideally a small doji candle uh, an inverse hammer, something that gives you a better gauge to short with more, with less risk, with less, <laughs> how do I say it, less risk. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see, now it went back up again, right? So it did break. So now if you shorted, just to give you an example, if it shorted here at 229, if it reversed and it broke that two that 220, just say 230, you'd want to potentially get out there because that's a potentially very bearish uh, or a, a bullish sign, which is an inverse of bearish, you want to cover your position. So obviously you wanted to, you ideally would like to have taken profit down here, but if you missed it and it shot back up here, once you see it getting back in, if you've got an entry towards the top over here, you're going to want to cover your position once it went over here. Um, but now, see, as you can see, another two double basically two tweezer tops. And then this time it collapsed. And as you can see, fell below VWAP, closed below the nine. Then now, now <coughs> you're going to watch for a pop. Once, whatever goes up must come down and whatever goes down must come back up, right? Um, so what's going to happen is after a drastic sell-off like something like this, buyers are going to come in in periods of time and either buy it all the way back up or start buying the dips and um, watching the patterns that are now forming. So as you can see, it closed below the nine. Then you almost have this hammer candle. Now, again, it's selling off. What's it want to do? It's going to go back now towards that line of defense. The nine, potentially VWAP. It rejected at VWAP, fell below the nine. Now you have a bear flag, right? So bull flag. Now you're finding a top. And now it's coming down. And now it's a bear flag. Now bear flag, so if you miss this top over here, you could have potentially sold, as you can see, there's some resistance at this candle here. This green doji did not hit it. So now you could have shorted that potentially right there below risking high this the high of this candle. So if you were to get on this bear flag, you wouldn't risk this high a day. All that resist, that's a lot of risk. Uh, you want to watch for the pop. Again, when a stock falls, there's going to usually be a pop. Once you find that pop, Sometimes, again, it's going to go against you because it's impossible to predict what a stock's going to do. But as you can see on this pop, on this bear flag, you could have shorted this, risking, high, risking this candle here, <clears throat> and now watching the moving average line. So now it fell below the 9 here. And what did it do? It hit the 20, closed below the 20. What's it going to do? Might want to pop back up again, another bear flag. So if you miss this entry, when it popped back up here, you could have shorted potentially below that right here, risking, you know, again, depending what your risk is, top of this candle right here. Um, obviously, you want to always keep your risk as low as possible. Uh, and then you can see another bear flag, boom, fell back down. And then eventually it's going to reverse. As you can see here, it just kind of consolidate, consolidated and went sideways. But my perfect example is there's here's a couple, some several different strategies, right? You have a very bullish uh, on the way up, trying to call a top, be very careful. Sometimes you have to go on a one minute chart to get this move. On a five minute, it's going to be very difficult. But on a one minute, you might be able to scalp it really quick. Um, we'll pull up a one minute chart in a second, but um, you can short it back down to the EMAs here. 
Uh, obviously, get a quick scalp. It went if you missed that and you caught the top here. Um, again, you can see here. A lot of times, what happens? The stock will go up a few cents and come back down. So there, were, I'm sure there was a bunch of traders that probably shorted right here, fell right back down, pop right back up to shake out a bunch of uh, shorts right here to cover their positions. But if they held strong, that 241 to 245. It was only about four cents because, again, whole and half dollar amounts, that 250 is above it. That's another psychological resistance point. So they may have been tried to, they may have tried to shake them out here, but then right at 250, there may have been a wall of sellers on level two. That's why you want to be very careful and be very con or very very aware of level two in time and sales, and watch again candlesticks, support resistance, level two time and sales. You got to look at the entire big picture when. But if you miss this move up and miss the top, now as it starts to fall, let it form some smaller candles. It's easier to trade a smaller candle rather than a bigger one. Better risk management. And then you can see it kind of reversed. It went bullish. Now it's going bearish. Bear flag. Bear flag. Bear flag. And you have to watch. Again, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. But pay attention. The further away price is from moving average lines, the more it wants to gravitate back. The further away it is away from VWAP, the more it naturally wants to gravitate back. The closer price is to the moving average lines, the more it's consolidating and trading sideways. So you obviously want to have an ideally a clear cut path. You want to have either a clear cut path going up or a clear cut path going down. I'm going to show you some that are bearish. So this is shorting on something that's bullish on the way up, <clears throat> potentially coming down. Let's take a look at the one minute strat one minute over here. You can see that a very, very popular pattern is uh, like head and shoulders kind of patterns or otherwise known as FU patterns. Sometimes you have to kind of get a gauge uh, where you'll see, this is not the greatest of one. Let me see, uh, you can see this could be, this 245 would have been a potentially a head. Right here would have been a potential left shoulder. Um, it didn't really pop up and create a right shoulder. Um, so ideally, you can say this is a right shoulder over here, but usually sometimes it comes up a little bit higher over here. Sometimes you got to gauge an eyeball. We're going to look at a few examples. Um, but my point being on all this, you can see the further away price is away from, see this huge green candlestick on a one minute, the tweezer top. This is where you could have taken your entry, 230 right down, you can see right down here to this 191, right back down to this nine, this nine, you can see it kind of consolidated. And what did it do? The buyers came back in again, and then kind of shorted it back down. Um, <clears throat> so again, pay attention to these areas. If you're shorting a top, watch how far price is away from the moving average lines, and then look to cover around the moving average lines when you see a potential reverse to go back up. So it's, um, now I'm going to talk to you about like how you would actually place this order. Basically, if you were to buy, just go long on a stock, right? If you bought the ask, you usually get filled right away. And if you sold the bid, bid you usually can sell right away. So buy the ask, sell the bid. In theory, if you get, obviously, sometimes it goes against you, but buying the ask would get you filled. And then when you have a position, selling the bid would get you filled most of the time, right? So buy the ask, sell the bid. Buy the ask, sell the bid. Obviously, if you bought the bid, you're trying to get a little bit um, you know, better of a price. If you're selling the ask, um, you know, then you're, you're, um, selling ask, you're trying to get more on the way up. So if your price is going up, <coughs> you're trying to sell at a peak level, you can try and sell the ask. But if you're trying to get in and out of a position quickly, buy the ask, sell the bid. With shorting, same, it's, a, it's just the same thing, but inverse. It's selling the bid, buying the ask, selling the bid, buy the ask. Sell the bid, buy the ask. So if up here, uh, see around 245, let's say the ask was 245 and the bid was 243. If you sold the bid, you would get filled at 243. So now you're borrowing shares from your broker, right? It's not as complicated as people think. If you short and hold overnight and longer than a day, yes, it can be very risky, especially biotechs. We wouldn't recommend holding uh, shorts on a biotech more than a day. Uh, but if you're intraday trading, you're just buying, you're borrowing shares from your broker 
at a ideally a higher price and buying them back at a lower price uh, to break or to uh, to level your position. So let's say you got up here, you shorted. Let's say the bid was 243. You shorted at 243, risking 245 as your um, as your stop loss. So if now if you shorted at 243 and it, this popped right back and it went up to two, uh, 248 or 249 or 250, you might want to cover. Obviously, looking at level two, but you can find see how it's a little bit better of a of a better risk management. Uh, it's it's better than this big green candle, right? It's hard to short on like a big risk. It's very risky in a candle like this. It gets better in something like this, you know, where you have 245, 235, you know, 10 to 15 cents. It's much easier as risk management, right? So selling the bid gets you in the position, buying the ask covers it. So if you short it at 243 and then this fell down, it bounced off the 20 and you saw this green little... Um, you know, candlestick, let's say you were looking to cover around that area. Let's say you didn't see this happening. You wanted to take your profits. You know, you sold at 243 and you covered at 216 right here, right? That's, uh, I don't know, almost 30 cents, 20, some 25, 26, 27 cents. My point being, that's how you can make some good money. You short at a top, cover around a moving average. But obviously you can see this fell down and it didn't cross back over the nine. It just bare flagged, right? And then it bear flagged down here. So you could have actually found the top here, shorted it down. It didn't go back up these move. It didn't go past these moving averages. The nine is now below the 20. This crossover is a bearish sign. And as you can see, it's fading, fading, fading. Now when price starts to cross back over that nine and the 20, now you definitely want to potentially cover. So if you shorted this top and watch this bear flag down, you really wouldn't have had to have cover until potentially down in this area over here, which obviously, you know, even say right here, this 180-ish area compared to 245, that's, you know, a 60-something cent move. So that's really, that's shorting, right? I mean, finding a top, shorting it down, or if you miss the top, when the bull flat or the bear flag comes back to the moving average lines, you can short it back down. See it comes right back to the moving average lines, short it down. Once it came back up over here, once it starts to fade below the moving average lines, you could potentially take a short here, risking here as your stop, and then watching when the price then reverses and starts going back again above these moving average lines, um, that's when things change and the trend shifts. But you can see the separation. See the 20 was over the 9. It's separated right here. That's good. When it starts to kind of pinch back in again, uh, that's where it's a potential uh, trend reversal. So again, sell the bid, buy the ass. Sell the bid, buy the ass. Make hundreds of practice trades in a virtual account to get comfortable. Again, just like you would with longing, buy the ass, sell the bid, buy the ass, sell the bid. Make hundreds of trades in a virtual account to get practice doing that. Then make hundreds of uh, trades practicing. Just, just rapidly go and in a virtual account, practice, just get in the movement. Sell the bid, buy the ass. Sell the bid, buy the ass. Sell at resistance levels, buy at support. Sell at resistance, buy at support. So when you're selling up at a, at a when you're borrowing shares from your broker, you're, when you, you're selling the bid, you're bar, borrowing shares from your broker. When you're buying it back, you level your position. Obviously, if you sell up here at 243 and you cover down in these areas like two two dollars or 220 you're making a profit if you sell at 243 and it reverses and goes to 250 then you just owe your broker the difference this is taking the loss in a different area so 250 compared to 245 that's five cents you'd owe your broker so basically you lost your position right so if you lost five cents on a trade going up with a thousand shares you lost uh 50 bucks if you lost you know, five cents on a short, on a reversal back up, you lost 50 bucks. It's no different. Uh, if you're shorting intraday and day trading, you have nothing to worry about as long as you have proper risk management strategies. But that's on a stock, again, going up and the different ways to look at it. The stock, the more it's away from these moving average lines, the more it wants to go back. The more when the price gets to those moving average lines, look for consolidation and look for potential buyers to come in and bring it back up or look for the sellers to stay in and push it back down. Again, the reverse is also true on stocks that are selling off. Let's see if we can find a good one selling off here today. Um, 
you know, you can see something like over here. Uh, not that one. You can see a stock just kind of like right over here. You can see this one right over here. You know, it finds a um, a top pre-market, right? So this is where you want, you know, you got to be careful. Like, so when you're going to trade, obviously you're looking pre-market, watching what's happening. Sometimes the stock will move up parabolic pre-market and then crash when the market opens. You have to watch patterns and watch what's forming. So you can see and then pay attention to these crossovers, the 9 and 20. 9 over the 20 is bullish. 9 or 20 over the 9 is bearish. And watch these moving average lines and just watch price next to the moving average line. So you can see this one found a top. And then when the market opened, what did it do? It just went and it bear flagged. So you can just see it's um, forming. Where is that here? Uh, where was that one? Uh, da, 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 da. I missed that position. Where did it go? Oh, okay, here we go. It opened up, and as you can see, bear flag, bear flag, and you know it's kind of bear flag, and then it's kind of making a position here, and then now it, now you have almost a descending triangle. If it falls below this base here, and you can see down here, that'd be a descending triangle, um, in it, in fading. But as you can see, this went and turned and reversed. That's why watching patterns head and shoulders pattern um you know is a uh, is a potential reversal finding a top you know bear flags are ones on when a stock is falling um descending triangles below a base head and shoulders below a base um double tops if you can't find a top you can find the base so it's finding the support and resistance areas um, and looking to short at those areas. So again, you can see here when a stock's falling, boom here, you can, it's not as, this one's not as great to look at, but you can see it's just calling, it's just finding the patterns, right? And shorting them down. When this is falling and it goes back to the moving average line, it rejected at the nine. You could have potentially taken a short right here, 530 and right down here to 466. That's a big drop, right? You got to take your profits along the way. Um, so again, finding tops, finding bottoms, uh, it's just the reverse of, um, longing just to show you over here on a different platform, what it looks like. I use DOS, which uses interactive brokers. Um, this is a different way. This is a level two, uh, montage that I really like. Um, <clears throat> so with over here, this is where you can pick specific prices and I can either hit short and buy, short or buy. So right, buy and short, short or buy. I can do um, hotkeys on this as well. So I have my hotkey set up over here that I can just do uh, my hotkeys to sell the bid, right? Or the ask. So you can see over here on the left, this is the bidders. And over here, this is the seller. So bid and ask. If I click over here, the 220, and I click short, then uh, chances are I would get filled, right? Because that's the bid. I'm selling the bid. So just showing you a different way of doing things, I can just click on these areas, short over here, or I can click over here. If I was to buy this to get in and go long, I can buy. If I was in the position and I wanted to sell, I can click over here and hit sell. I can adjust the price up or down. So if I'm watching key areas that I want to watch it break up or break down, I can kind of watch these areas over here. So let's say like on, on um, let's go back to that one, ONCS, ONP, I mean, at 245, right? If I wanted to, when a price got up to 245, let's go to ONP. That wasn't today. That was a couple of days ago. But perfect example, if it was at 245, I could have had my, you know, a limit order in so that as price fell below, you know, let's say this area here, 230, um, or there's 245 up here, I could have a couple different things. I could have hit the bid when it was at 243, shorted it down. I could have had a hot key, uh, clicked, um, you know, use my hot keys to sell and then to buy it back in, or I could have done a limit order, right? I could have adjusted it at 240, 241, 243, and protected which area, like, you know, meaning I didn't want to short 
pay more than 240 as a short, right? So I'm just trying to show you different ways to do this. Again, over here, you have the sell the bid, buy the ask. You could also go into trade. I don't want to go into all these different areas, but you can place a trade uh, with doing a limit order um, and just go, let's see right up here, right, sell. You can come down here with thinkorswim, pick the amount of shares this way. Obviously short, not buy, right? So selling a thousand shares, I could put my limit order in, I could put my price adjusted however I wanted, and then confirm and send. Um, over here, again, I could do it up or down this way and just sell the button, right? So put my price in in short or put a hot key in to short. And then to cover my position, I could either click on this and buy it, click on the ask or whatever price that I want to go at, or put a limit order in and just buy. So sell, which would be short, buy to cover, sell buy to cover, right? Sell the ask, or sell the bid, buy the ask. Sell the bid, buy the ask, or put in limit orders. Again, this shows you limit orders and what that looks like. Um, or put in, again, limit order over here. I want to show you guys diverse platforms and what it looks like, but the theory behind it is very, very simple. It's just the complete inverse of buying a stock. Sell the bid, buy the ask, or again, you can sell the ask and buy the bid. So as a stock, now that's you know, again, when these stocks will fall and then pop back up, um, you know, many people will sell on the ass. So when it pop, you know, you can see a stock's kind of coming back up here, comes back and it fades right over down over here. And when it pops back up, you could sell the ask at a higher price, you know, depending what the price is. So as the price is coming back up, you can sell at the ask at a peak level uh, or selling again at the bid usually, um, fills you right away. But my point being is sell the bid gets you filled right away. It's finding a top, shorting it down to the moving average lines, or, um, you know, when a stock is falling below the moving average lines, watch for things like bear flags and short it down. And when price comes back above those moving average areas, you buy the ask, um, or put in a limit order to cover your position. I use hotkeys, so I'm very, very prone with hotkeys. Uh, so I basically have my hotkey set up, um, you know, buy five cents above the ask and sell five cents below the bid. Um, I'll, I'll get my positions a lot through the trading montage, so I'll kind of find my orders like through a limit order this way, this way first, right? You know, I'll find my position. I either buy or I'm selling. And then I use my hotkeys usually to get in and out of my position. Um, but that, again, that's a matter of my preference. I'm just trying to show you a few different ways uh, to look at things. So that's really it with shorting. It's all about learning support and resistance, though. I can't explain it all in this video. Uh, make sure you take our courses. 